Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to change the clutch assembly on your direct drive washer. It's a pretty easy job. You don't need too many tools. I'm going to need a half inch and 7 16 socket with an extension and a ratchet. Probably could use a pair of channel lock pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, medium sized flat blade, and a small flat blade, and a quarter inch nut driver. Let me show you how it's done. Now the easiest way to do this repair is to pull the washer out away from its position and lay it on its back to remove the transmission to get to the clutch. So we'll start with disconnecting the power, we'll pull the fill hoses off it and the drain hose so that we have the opportunity to pull the washer away from its position. Next we'll start with taking the agitator out. So we'll grasp the top, pull that off. Next, we'll pull the cover off the top of the bolt. It's just a friction fit, so pull that out. And then we'll remove the 7 16 bolt that holds the agitator to the shaft. You'll probably have to hold the agitator with one hand to get that bolt started. Reach into the tub, grasp the edge there, and pull straight up on it. And we can remove that. And once we've removed the agitator, take this clip off of the agitator shaft and the plastic base piece as well. Set those aside because we will need to reinstall them. Next, we need to remove the cabinet. To do so, we'll need to remove two Phillips screws that secure the console to the main top. Now this model has them on the back. Some you will find that to be a Phillips screw right at the front. Now at this point, we'll push the console forward, just give it a little bump, and tilt it backwards, just rotate it right over the back. And with a flat blade screwdriver, we will depress these two clips, just slide them down into the front portion, push down and forward, and then we'll disconnect the harness to the lid switch, connect it right at the top. Simply unlock the tab and disconnect that. Remove those retaining clips. Now we're ready to remove the cabinet. Now to remove the cabinet, we're simply going to lift up at the back and tilt it towards us. And then we can disengage the hooks at the front set the whole cabinet aside. Now to get at the clutch assembly, it is located in behind the pump and motor assembly attached to the transmission. So to get to that, we'll need to remove the pump with these two clips and we'll need to remove the motor. The easiest way to do that is to lay the washer on its back. So you want to make sure you have a towel handy just in case there's some water left in the drain hose. And if you can find an assistant to help you lower the washer down, it'll be a whole lot easier on you. Now before we tilt this back, we should roll the console forward, and then with one hand supporting the, the back, we can simply tilt the whole washer back, lay it gently on the floor. And that will give us exposure to the pump. Just take the flat screwdriver, put it underneath that clip, pry it upwards, quarter turn and they will slide out of the slot. The same with the remaining one. Now we can simply lift the 
pump off of the motor shaft, tuck it aside. Now, that gives us exposure to two quarter inch hex head screws that hold the retaining clips for the pump in place, and it also exposes the wire harness. Disconnect the wire harness from the motor. Remove the two quarter inch hex head screws. And again with a flat blade, just pry that clip out of the way. Rotate the clip out of the slot in the motor base. Then we can simply lift the motor right off of the transmission. The coupler between the motor and the transmission may stay with the motor or it may stay with the transmission, it doesn't really matter. Now we can set that aside. Now with the motor out of the way, we're ready to pull the transmission. There's three half inch bolts that we need to pull off of there. And we also want to disconnect the wire harness from the retaining clip here. Just a flat blade screwdriver, just dislodge that clip pull the harness out of the way. Now with all three bolts removed, we'll simply pull straight out. Now we have access to our clutch assembly. Now that we have the transmission and clutch assembly out, we can set about to change that clutch. First of all, we'll remove the thrust washer, just slide it off the shaft. And then with a flat blade screwdriver, we'll remove this big E-clip. Just gently pry it off. Next, we need to remove the retaining spring. Again, we'll use a slightly smaller flat blade, but we're just going under the edge of it. Pry it up gently. Then we can slide the clutch right off of the shaft. Now we'll take note of the color of the spring in your clutch assembly and the kit that you get will have one or two extra springs with it. Make sure you match up the proper color. This one uses a blue one and it comes pre-installed with a blue one on it. So we're ready to reinstall this. Next we'll take the anti-rattle clip, this little nylon piece, snap that into the back, slide the assembly down. Rotate it until the notches line up. We'll put in our new retaining spring. Put the hooked end into the hole in the clutch body. And then with a the flat blade, we'll pry that spring in underneath the flange. Short snapped fully into place. Next, we're going to replace our E ring. And this is best done with a pair of channel lock pliers. So line it up with the slots on the shaft. Push it forward. If it's really tight, just take the channel locks and squeeze it into place.
reinstall the thrust washer. Now before we reinstall the transmission assembly, we need to replace this brake cam driver with one that is supplied with the kit. It's held in place with a little E-ring, so with a tiny flat blade screwdriver between the shaft and the E-ring. Pry it off enough that we can get a bigger screwdriver in there. Remove that E-clip. Place it with our new one. And there are a couple of locating pins there that need to line up with the holes on that brake cam. We can reinstall that clip. large pair of channel locks is probably the best tool to put that clip back on. Make sure we line it up with the groove on the basket shaft. Get this in the way. Now we're ready to reinstall the transmission. Now with the new clutch assembly installed, we're ready to put the transmission back in. So line up the shaft with the basket tube. Carefully slide it all the way forward. We'll reinstall the three half inch bolts. These bolts don't need to be torqued extra tight. Just make sure they're good and snug. We'll reroute the wire harness to the motor through the retaining clip. And snap it in place. Now we're ready to reinstall the motor and the pump. Now I find the easiest way to put that motor back in is to take the rubber drive coupling and set it onto the portion that is attached to the transmission, line it up to make it a little easier, make sure all four rubber motor mounts are in place. wiggle it a little bit to line up that coupling. Next we'll reconnect the motor harness. Make sure it locks into position. Now we're ready to put the mounting straps back in. Engage them in the slotted hole in the base. Come on. And pry them into their position. It's not necessary to replace these two quarter inch hex head screws. They're basically there just for shipping purposes. But we'll put them back in anyways. Now we're ready to reinstall the pump. It's a flat sided shaft on the motor, so we need to make sure that that will engage the pump properly. And that all four legs in the pump sit firmly on the motor. 
next we'll re replace the mounting straps for the pump. Make sure we didn't loosen any hoses. And we're ready to stand the washer up. Now that we have the transmission and the motor and the pump all reinstalled, we're ready to stand the washer back up. Tilt the console back again, and we're ready to put the cabinet on. Now to reinstall the cabinet, we need to locate two raised tabs on each side of the washer with corresponding slots in the base frame of the cabinet. And we'll tuck the front edge of the cabinet under this cross rail. Check to make sure it's engaged on both sides. Now that we have our cabinet lined up, we're just going to briefly tilt it back so that we can push the water inlet underneath the cabinet, pull the whole cabinet just slightly up until we get her back in place. And again, make sure that both sides of the cabinet are locked into the base frame. Now we can reconnect our lid switch connector. Make sure it locks into place. We're ready to reinstall the clips for the back. Slide them into the back first, push the back forward, and depress the clips into the top. Roll the console back into position. Make sure the tabs on either side line up. And give a slight bump backwards and reinstall the two Phillips screws in the back. Careful not to over tighten these screws, they just go into a plastic insert. Now we're ready to reinstall the agitator. Before we reinstall the agitator, we do need to put the index tab back in place, make sure it drops into the slot, and then the retaining clamp on top of it, and then we're ready for the agitator. Line it up, press it down over the spline shaft, and we'll tighten that 7 16 bolt. You probably have to grasp the base of the agitator to hold it while you tighten that bolt. Next, we need to replace the cap and gasket. If the gasket didn't come out with a cap, it's still stuck down inside here, so we need to fish that out. Put your softer dispenser back in the agitator. Now we're ready to reconnect the hoses, drain hose, two fill hoses, and connect it to the power. Your job is complete. That's just how easy it is to change a clutch in your direct drive washer. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your repair.